All right, here we are. Th this is the simple view. So what we want to do, what this, what this little picture is telling you is that we want to get vendor certification. And that contains two things. Washington State Department of Agricultural Food Safety Certification under this law, 16-165, uh, and the Primus, a GFS certification. Now the Primus is broken up into three sections. Well, they're not in order here. Let's put them in order, kind of OCD like that. There we go. So what I've had to do is I have to figure out all the requirements. So that's all this stuff right here. I got to figure out what these documents say. So you open up those documents, and then what we want to do is we want to bring them all. So if you look over here, uh, this is the, all the requirements that I'm keeping track of. And I'm opening up this diagram right now, which tells me the overarching structure. That's where we're at here. And then here's Primus Section 1, 2, 3, and Washington State Department of Agriculture. So these are all the requirements. So if we open those up, look at that. Look at all those words. That's a lot. And we do this again for number two. And two is the big one. There's lots of stuff in there. Look at all those requirements. And I'm just scrolling through it so you can kind of get an idea. These are all the requirements. Look at that. It just keeps going. It just doesn't stop. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, hey, it finally stopped. But well, we got section three. Section three is a short one. There we go. Okay, then we do Washington State Department of Ag. Boom. Look at all those quite a few there. Alright, so let me show you kind of another view here. Those are the, the words. Let's get up to a diagram. Okay, so let's go section one. Now look down here in this corner here. Uh, I can't really zoom into it. You lose it. But this structure, this tree, if you will, that's all the requirements and then the requirements are linked. What we want to do is we want to link requirements to actual ways that we're going to meet those requirements. So here, let's zoom out in the big picture here. Now you kind of get an idea. It won't even let me zoom out all the way where you can see it. So we're looking at here, this is our top level requirement, way up at the top. There you go, little buddy. So this is Primus Section 1 right here, okay? And then all its lower level requirements, kind of show you, zoom in. So here's one. Um, rejection and release of products. So if I click on that, this is just a header and it contains lower level requirements. So we click on those and here's, this is the requirement and then this is its description of what you need to do. Now that's all good and dandy, but the real problem that, and why we do this, is we wanna figure out how are we gonna meet this requirement? How are we gonna satisfy it? So then what I have to do over the last few weeks, I have to look at every single one of those requirements that I scrolled through and I have to come up with some way to satisfy it. So in this case, what it's saying is I'm gonna create a document that's, a, that's titled Non-Conforming Material Handling Policy. And that policy is responsible for satisfying this requirement. Now that, that's just, of course, a document. In the real world, what will happen is this policy will create procedures, process that I have to go through, and then I'll have to do audits, internal audits, to verify that I'm actually following that process. And then I'll have to generate records that show that I actually executed an internal audit to ensure that I'm following the process which supports the policy. Get it? That's how crazy all this ends up being. Now these these policies can be like one page, you know, and, and maybe a sentence like, thou shalt not uh, sell rejected material or uh, we will throw away rejected material. You know, that could be the policy. It could be very, very simple. And then their process could also be very simple as well. It could be, hey, this, uh, this microgreen is brown, throw it away. Uh, it, it could be that simple. Uh, and then you have to have some form of audit where uh, we come in and we self audit ourselves and say, okay, have you thrown away the brown stuff? You know, how much loss do you have? Uh, the records could be fairly simple, but you have to go through and do it. So this is just section one. And again, you can kind of see how big this thing is. We scroll, look at all this. So here's, here's a big one. Let's zoom in there. Where to go? There it is. So this is standard operating procedures. So you got to have, oh man, it keeps changing. There we go. Uh, you got to have a bunch of standard operating procedures and then those link to requirements. So you got to map all this stuff out and that's what I've been doing is 
re, you know, bringing in all of these green boxes, which are requirements, and then linking them to these, uh, what color is that? Like a salmon orangish color thing? I'm not good with that stuff. Um, and, and making sure that every single green box has a little pinky salmon box linked to it that says satisfy. So uh, this is just section one. Let's look at section two. This one really blows your noodle, blows my noodle. All right, look at this down here <laughs> in the left here. Look at that. That's how crazy this one is. So let's zoom out as far as we can. There we go. This, I think this gives you a good idea of what I mean by average Joe reading this. Uh, without the right tools and the experience, this, this would be tough. I mean, for me, again, I've gone through this for aerospace, uh, and I this is on par with an aerospace level certification. I, I think that's a little ridiculous, personally. I'm, I'm glad for food safety. That's important. You know, we don't want to get anybody sick, but look, look at this. Look at all these requirements. There are hundreds of little salmon color boxes there. That's every single one of those is a, a piece of work that we have to do. That's a document that has to be created or a system uh, or an analysis. So th that is so much. Let's go down to section three here. Section three isn't as bad. You can see it, it's a little bit less crazy. That's a small one. And we go to Washington State Department of Ag and we look at it. Look at this one. It's, it's big as well. Uh, the good news is, is that if you go after the primus, uh, this one becomes a lot easier. In fact, there's only a few things that this required that were probably buried in the primus and I missed it. But you can see, look at all the green boxes and then those salmon color boxes. Just There's so much work. So you do all this work, right? And you're like, well, what good is this? What we want to do is we want to figure out all the things that we actually need to build in the, the physical world. So physical blocks, that's just my name of things I need to do. I could have just called this the to-do list. And what ended up happening is when you go through and you, you put this all in place, you kind of see a pattern. And what the pattern started showing is you're going to need to do a bunch of analysis. You're going to have to have a ton of documentation, equipment. Uh, there's going to be some events that you have to do. There's going to be facilities that you have to have. People have certain requirements. So this, this one makes more sense when you open this up. There has to be someone who's designated the good agricultural practice person. There has to be a food safety program manager. There has to be a, a what's it? HACCP uh, hazard analysis and critical control point program manager. Uh, these are three people, three roles that have to be filled uh, within your organization. You have to have a ton of records. Look at all these records that you have to keep. Uh, you have to have a record retention policy. You have to have systems that are built. Uh, so a good good example. This one's big. A, approved suppliers management system so you can't just go buy stuff off of Amazon anymore right uh, you have to have an approved supplier you have to have documentation you have to have requirements they have to meet those requirements you have to show that they verified that they meet the requirements um, tools have to be calibrated this is a good one this is what this is saying is make sure that your scales are weighing the right thing um, that that's a big deal that makes total sense to me um, and a lot of these systems they make sense it's just uh, they're getting to this point is tough so you have to have training all these things have to be put in place so uh, these are these are patterns that started showing up as I started creating those uh, these little salmon color boxes here these patterns started showing it so I just created folders for them to keep them all in so then what we ultimately get is this this is showing to have a certified vendor system, you have to have analysis, documentation, equipment, events, et cetera, et cetera, all those things I just told you about. So if we look over here, one of the big ones is documentation, and documentation consists of policies and standing operating procedures. So then here's the SOPs, and each of those SOPs is broken down further and further and further, right? So um, here's all the policies. So let's look at documentation real fast. Let's go over here. We're going to dig into this, this red one right here. We're going to see a little more detail, kind of get an idea. Now look at the tree down here. Look how big that is. This is all the documentation that has to be created. So there's that red one, right? This is, oops, that's not where I wanted to go. I didn't, okay, I didn't have that open. All right, so then I come over here. 
here's all the standard operating procedures. So then we start looking at those and we go, all right, we have safety management, right? Safety management uh, broken up into general safety and food safety. We look at food safety, look at all these documents that have to be put in place. These are all procedures that have to be written. You ha they, they can't just be something you do. You actually have to write down every single one of them. They want you to tell them how you're going to meet the requirement using policy and procedures. Then they want you to audit yourself and make sure that you're actually following those and generate records. Here's just general safety things that have to be there. Um, there's so much. Here's a, yeah, here we go. This is just operations. So this is uh, what you do within the operational world here. Uh, look at all these sub documents you have to have. Look at how many there are. It's crazy. Anyway, so now my next step is I actually have to open up each one of these blocks and I have to figure out all the requirements uh, that they have to meet. So I, I mapped them all to each other and now I have to go back and look at each block. So let's see here. Let's try to create one real fast. I'll go up here, design, new, block definition diagram. I want to do this analysis. So I bring that in and then I want to related elements all and I want to show all the requirements that this thing has to meet. Oops, that didn't work. Insert related elements all. There we go. There's the requirement. Okay, so now what this is saying is that this foreign object risk assessment is here because it's meeting this requirement. It satisfies this requirement of foreign material risk analysis. So I can open this up. I don't really have anything in here that tells me anything. It looks like I did a bad job copying. Uh, so now I know that this thing has to be created because of this requirement, but that wasn't a very good demonstration. You can get the general idea though. So now I have to go create a, a, a diagram essentially that says here's this thing I have to go make and here's all of its requirements and then I decompose those requirements and, and this a little bit further to make sure that it's complete. Then I have to go create a work package for us to actually do uh, and to, to go perform this analysis, document the analysis, release the analysis, etc. That all has to be done. Uh, so I go from this requirements world into what I would call project management where I figure out all right, here's the requirements and here's all these things you need to go make or build and then how are you going to go make or build those. So I'll probably use Microsoft Project and Jira and we'll lay that all down and uh, figure out what we need to do. But this is months and months worth of work here. Let me show you kind of an idea how much stuff there is to do. So each one of these um, folders contains work. So we already looked at analysis. So what is that, like 12 or 15 analysis that has to be completed look at documentation and you can see it's significant that's probably the biggest one lots of documentation that has to be put in place and then we come over to equipment lots of equipment requirements here not too bad a lot of that stuff's pretty easy events these are just yearly events you have to schedule you have to define them how are you going to do them there have to be records that you do it facilities uh, this is going to be the one that really impacts how we do things. Uh, so we're going to spend a lot of time there. People we already looked at, three of those, not bad. Records, lots and lots of records. So records means, I, essentially that means I have to have a system that keeps track of all those records. And then I have to start performing the process and start generating the records. Now to get certified, you have to have three months worth of records. So I have to have three months worth of all this stuff in place as applicable. Some of it um, occurs every year. but. Uh, here's another one It's going to take some time and money. Uh, this is putting systems or devices in place that you need to have uh, in order to execute and then training. Uh, you'll have to go to training plus we'll also have to build training and then a training management system that keeps track of all that stuff so you have records. And again this is going to be as complicated uh, or as simple as you want. Uh, we're obviously going to go for the simplest possible way of doing things. So. Uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, kind of crazy, uh, but this is why I haven't been able to post anything for a while. This, this stuff is pretty tough. Now i got to turn this all into work. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter if you like. 
boy, in the next week we're going to have some fun. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. So stay tuned for getting the, the building reskinned. In the meantime, everyone, this is Real Martian. Out.